All right, just drained the oil out of um, Rocket's bike, so I'm a few days behind here, guys, but uh, catching up on stuff today. So Rocket's concerned in relation to the tensioners um, from the pinion comes off the crank, obviously, with the gearing that goes across your cam plate up to your cam drive. And then on the inside, we have got the cam um, chain itself that controls both cams on the twin cam to run in timing. So we'll get it apart, have a look. We have got some, um, some new ones here to put in. Now, due to this bike being pulled down for what it is, um, it doesn't have adjustable push rods. So what we'll be doing is taking the covers off, getting in, cutting out the old standard push rods, this will have an update to an adjustable push rod. And reason being is by the time you take the tank off, get all your rocker boxes off, rocker gear out, everything to pull out the standards, there's obviously time consumption in that. So with this, it's easier just to get in, cut these ones out. And obviously we'll get the bike on top of dead center, everything else, which I'll show you guys. And then we will update in here and then we'll update. And yet again, we'll go back together. We'll have a new um, cam cover, nose cone uh, gasket to go on. And I've got to think what else is here. But anyway, that's our starting point. Okay, so um, as predicted, we do see um, a, clock, a fair bit of wear and tear on these. So I'll get them out and show you exactly what's going on. Um, but yeah, they've done their miles. So we'll get in, time this thing up, um, get the cam plate. We'll get everything out, obviously get all the push rods out and whatnot. But yeah, I'll just show you what goes on here. So even though we're not like going into a full service on this thing, the plugs have got to come out to rotate the motor. So obviously that's your rear cylinder plug. She's pretty fluffed up, getting rich and everything else. So we're always going to read the plugs. I'm going to put some new plugs in regardless anyway um, for Rocket. But reading your plugs is always essential. The rear is going to run, being a carby bike, um, we're not seeing as much airflow getting to the rear cylinder. You're going to see it be hotter. Um, the behaviour is going to be a little bit different. The front, not bad. You can see on the actual earth strap, there's a fine line there, which is going to indicate our timing. Um, we really want to see it on the actual bend on the rear, uh, which we're a bit on top. But anyway, we just got to look for the heat, the amount of heat that's going through the plug, um, how it's running at idle, if the porcelain's got any fragmentation from detonation there's just ways you can read plugs but we'll be putting new ones in give it a run and see what it does all right so we've got our rear cylinder on top dead center spark plugs out we've rotated the bike over in top gear with obviously the rear wheel off the um, bench um, our dots are lining up obviously on the standard um, clutch plate we have got uh, standard fucking cam plate we've got a few markings here and everything to have everything line up regardless so rule of thumb is obviously with your push rods, they should be like a, a minutely tension tight on a twist, which they both are. I can get my fingers in there and do so. The front's gonna be different because also we're rocking off the cam on the rear. So now we're right to cut these and we'll get these out, um, rotate the motor over, we'll get the fronts out and then we'll pull everything out and we'll slip the cam plate out and get in and, um, and we'll be replacing the, uh, the tensioners. So it's an actual unit with a pad fixed to it and one on the inside. Alrighty, so just to start, I've just cracked one. Oops, there goes one part of it. Now the thing is with these, the reason why we do use a set of bolt cutters, sounds pretty crazy. However, it's a clean cut. If you grind or try, yeah, obviously if you grind hacks or you can have filings going everywhere, it is a precision cut more to the point of what this is. So that's why they are cut. After this, we do have obviously an adjustable one that will go in. Um, which I will speak about as we go through this. So before I cut in the next one, um, you can understand the cut of what goes on with those. Now, obviously check your um, your ends on your push rods when you pull them out, just for your, your common, you know, wear, tear, grooving, abrasion, discoloration, like these are still quite a flat surface. Yes, um, it has obviously shined itself up, but we're sweet on that. So we'll get the other ones out. So yet again, inspect. These are still really, really good. 
um, which is tops, that's what we want to see, so good stuff. Rear cylinder then. Okay, um, so with the front cylinder, um, we've got some spinning action on the push rods, which is great, we're top dead centre. So I've rotated the rear wheel, had my finger on the spark plug hole. On compression, it tries to take your finger off. When it overlaps from um, compression stroke to come back down, you will feel your finger getting sucked in. You've got to find that rocking motion of uh, being top dead. For me, hey, it's no drama for you guys at home. If you're unsure, um, you've got to make sure that obviously you can rotate the push rods because what's happening is the lifters themselves um, are on the rear side of the camshafts and not on the ramp itself, um, which means they're going to be rocking in conjunction with what we want for top dead centre. Um, I'll have to do a breakdown video on that because I just got to keep going, but we'll um, get these ones out now. So a bit hard doing this with that there, but we'll give it a go. Right, so we've got the bolt cutters in, yet again, apply pressure. Standard push rod is now in half. You can take it out, make sure you check your ball ends on the push rods themselves, and they will come out just like that. No mess, it's easy, it saves time, especially for the customer, instead of taking a tank off and all the rocker gear, rocker boxes, um, delving into that, this is the way to go about it. Um, I know it looks pretty funky, but the thing is, doing this, even Harley do it. So it's it's everywhere. Don't be scared um, that this is a bit how you're going. Right, yeah, that's our stuff all done, guys. Now we can get our cam plate out um, and do our tensioner changeover, inspect, and start putting some things back together shortly. Shit up. All right, so um, top dead center again on the rear um, cylinder. So the gearing and everything obviously was aligned um, from the pinion across to your, your cam. Um, now I've backed these off with an Allen key by hand and now I'll undo these um, just with the rattle gun so I'll do that now okay so we are replacing our gasket here which that will come off um, so the thing is with your cam plate I hope you can see this one of the bolts where it actually locates on the um, what would you call the rear side of the cam plate has got a dowel so it's a locator so what I typically do is get a rag against the motor and a very small pry bar and just give that a quick nudge and then all it does is obviously um, the dowel itself can unrecess to what it is to the plate. We'll just sit it and let it drain for a sec. And then we're good to pull that unit out uh, now. And we'll get in and have a look. All right, so that's still sort of draining itself, but I'll pull it out and just show you um, what we're looking for. And if you are pulling a cam plate out, there's O-rings behind here that we have to know um, are getting replaced or put back in. Um, yeah, there's three that we're we're aware of in there, and then there's also a filter system. Also, but some of the checks that go on, I'll just let this drain and then I'll come back on. I know this is gonna be a bit hard with one hand. All right, so I'll film as best I can. So what we've got to look for here, um, your oil pump here where the feed is, there's an O-ring that will be recessed into the actual, uh, where are we, here. Um, that will be still in the motor. And then obviously we've got a couple that seal up against the oil pump itself uh, that produce your oil feed uh, going back to the tank. This being a soft tail as well. Um, or well, it's the same regardless, but we have got a couple of things to, where are we, to keep an eye on here. Now up the top here, we've got another tensioner. Um, so that orange piece there is our, oh God, this oil's sort of going everywhere. Uh, the tensioner pad, these do wear. So we're going to have a replacement of chain, tensioner, and then on the front side here, where we've got a tensioner also, that's going to be replaced in the chain that drives from your pinion up to your, your cam gear. So I'll just get this out, clean it up, and we'll get back on point, but that's where we're at. Obviously upon assembly, I'll be putting assembly lube on the face of the lobes for the cam, um, where the cam, reset, the cam recesses back into the bearing, into the, the case. Um, there's just a couple of things that we do on the way as well, so that's that. All right, so when you've got your cam plate out and your cams, 
typically speaking on a cam upgrade, the bearings get replaced back here. Um, the thing is with the standard um, bearing and what they've done with Harley, uh, they've changed a lot of things over the years and I guess they're trying to save money here and there. However, with this style of bearing, it runs a cage inside for the rollers. The aftermarket ones you get are a full roller, needle roller setup. Um, just a far better product. Um, better for when you're revving the bike up, having load in the area because of the cam lift and everything else. But they do get replaced. Um, so, yeah, we will obviously put a bit of assembly lube in here and on the cam ends for when they do recess back into their bearing. you got to obviously make sure that you have got um, O-rings here and here. And there's one down in here for the back of the oil pump. Um, this bike hasn't done many miles, but for what it's done and what those products are in relation to the tensioners, they wear out really quickly. Uh, it's just one of those things. It was quite a cheapish style pad that goes on it, so we are updating it today. Um, so, yeah, we will have a bit of assembly lube on a couple of things. Um, these are still got good tension in them. They're hanging out of the body of the, the case nicely. And then also got to make sure this one's in here for when we do go for assembly again. Um, but we'll go through some of that on the next part. I guess I'm saying this because if you do it at home and that's not in there, we're going to see a, a pressure um, amount come down for your oil pressure in the motor, which is no good. So if you're seeing a seat come out, it's not sealing going in the motor, we're losing pressure, you're going to see damage on the way. Same with these guys where they intertwine and face off from here to the cam cover itself, uh, the cam plate, sorry. Now another rule of thumb, I do take lifters out to look at lifter bores. This thing is running really, really good. Um, the abrasion on the lifter body itself um, is awesome. So this thing's had good oil changes. Uh, it hasn't been flogged. You know, it is a standard application mode. It's the first time it's been a part in its life. Um, but everything's looking sweet as, so that's a good sign as well. Other things to look for. So we have got a brass bushing in there end of the cam plate. Now the thing is with this, it will dictate, determine what our crank run out is. Sorry, I'm trying to get the thing in there. Uh, how the crank run out is, because if the crank run out is uh, sort of sitting out of where it's meant to be, you will see marginal wear um, and scuffing inside that bush. It is replaceable. Um, but for the way we're looking, I will do a quick run out. So one thing we can check is off the hand and the nail. If we're seeing lines, um, typical wear, uh, I'll do a run out anyway and just see where it's at. It's good for a rule of thumb to understand where that's at. Um, there's no metal and stuff in the bottom there. Yeah, so just stuff like that. These are little checks that you just do on the way. All right, so back to the cam plate. So on the cam side, um, we have got a, a lockout hole, so to speak, to, to pull that tensioner up and lock it out. So we can slip our cams and everything out. Um, and then we'll continue on to put some new material in here, some new parts. All right, so cams are out. Um, that tensioner there is for the cam uh, gear to gear. Keeps everything in time. Um, keeps some pressure on. So we can see on the face, kind of. Um, just obviously how deep it is starting to come in. So it's it's done its reasoning for what until this period of time. We'll update this now with uh, it's a Daytona product from Rollies, replacement chains and tensioners. Let's do a comparison. So we've got two different tensioners here. One would be, I would say, internal to the actual uh, cam plate, external. Um, we've got a hook style system here which can allow it to be moved and locked out. So what we're gonna do is just go right that's done whatever miles, cool. And we've got a freshie. So you can obviously tell between the two um, how these, you know, do have an impact over time. Anyway, we'll update that now and start getting it back together. So we've somewhat preloaded our tensioner now. So we've just jammed an Allen key in there to keep that up so we can entertain these cams to go back in. 
You notice on the gears of the cams, uh, we've got a couple of marks that need to line up. Obviously on the end of the cams, we've got some, um, some imagery as well. So we'll get those together, get them back in. Everything goes together as it come apart, the way it's shimmed the whole lot. So we'll jump onto it. Trying to get a bit of footage as we go. So obviously having your cams uh, seated to where they've got to go. We've got our clip back in. It's rotating, it's flush. We're right here, we do have a sleeve um, that goes in here upon assembly. Now we haven't released the tensioner yet. That chain has got some good tension on it. It's brand new, obviously. Um, so prior to assembly, uh, back in the bike, we will be putting a heap of uh, assembly lube on the lobes where the end of the cam goes into its bearing. Um, the chain as well, because this will be dry upon startup. Um, so yeah, try and keep it assembly lube in here as we go. Uh, we'll keep rocking on. Alrighty, so we've got our cam plate, cam install, everything back in there, lined up. We have now uh, put the bloody tensioner back uh, and located it, so there's no tension there. We will get our um, new chain on for the pinion uh, gear that goes up to our camshaft uh, end gear here so we'll get that organized and so we've got to pick this bloody gasket off but we're getting there all right so we're at this point now behind this wash we have got a dot on this gear so anyone at home we do have lines like obviously on the um, cam plate your dot connection needs to line up for the timing um, yeah so just keep an eye on that stuff when you do pull it apart other than that we've got our tensioner on new chain our guide's in, I've uh, got to get this gasket off now, redo that and then uh, get on to the next bit.